Todd Mullis, a hog farmer from Iowa, convicted of murdering his own wife with a corn rake. A corn rake. This was a, a, a very emotional trial. His son had to testify. His son uh, found the body. Uh, just a horrible, horrible case. But it's been a year, and he still has not been sentenced. Well, tomorrow is the day, and Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter is live in Manchester, Iowa, uh, with the latest. Uh, Chanley, great to see you out doing what you do, uh, which is cover courtrooms around America. Um, how are things set up for tomorrow? What's the physical setup, and what do we expect to happen? Well, first of all, Vinny, we are, like you said, in Manchester, Iowa. This is different a different county or location from where Todd Mullis' actual trial took place. Behind me is the Delaware County Courthouse. And about 10 miles from here, east of here, is Earlville. That's where Todd Mullis lived with his wife, Amy, and their three children for years before her murder in November 2018. And the trial was moved east to Dubuque, Idaho, because of the defense change of venue motion. And like you said, a year ago this month. So let's just take a moment and let's bring our viewers up to speed on what has happened in this case. Less than a thousand people live in Earlville, Iowa. Most make their living hog farming. That was the case for Amy and Todd Mullis. The couple owned and operated this sprawling complex that included two hog barns and lived on the property with their three children. The hardworking couple built their business together, but while the business thrived, the relationship did not. Amy began an affair with this man in 2018. Jerry Fraser sold farm supplies to the couple. Initially, when you first started seeing Amy, what kind of things would you talk about in the future? Talked about there was a chance we could end up together. It was the second affair Amy had during her marriage to Todd. And friends and relatives feared that Amy was taking a big risk. When she very first told me the very first day that she was having an affair, I'm, I was so angry at her because I told her, you know, Amy, you're putting yourself in a really dangerous situation and I said at that time he is going to kill you and why did you say that because Todd is just a the person you don't mess with Amy's brother testified that she wanted to leave Todd and was preparing a move Amy asked me if she could store um, grandma's couch and some chairs and lamps at my house um, so that she would have some furniture when she left Todd but before she could make it happen, on November 10th, 2018, her life was cut short. Her 13-year-old son found her in the shed that morning. She was just inside the door. And what position was she in? She was kind of on her hands and knees, face down. What did you do? Um, I yelled for my dad. Did you see anything that was protruding or sticking out of your mom's body? Yes. What did you see? A uh, corn rake. Todd suggested to first responders that his wife died as a result of an accidental fall on a corn rake, which he removed from her back. I, I just wanted to help her. I just wanted to, let's, let's go to the hospital. Just set her down more or less a little bit in my arm. I just reached over, I pulled the fork out. But a closer look at her injuries led investigators to another conclusion. And in this case, what was the manner of death? Homicide. Dr. Kelly Cruz examined Amy's body and found six puncture wounds in different directions, but just four prongs on the corn rake. What do those different directions indicate to you? To me, they indicate that she would have to be impaled with the rake at least twice. Prosecutors argued Todd killed his wife because he did not want to lose the farm in a divorce and that he was bitter about his wife's infidelity. Prosecutor Maureen Hughes accused Mullis of calling his wife, quote, a cheating whore under his breath during the 911 call. <laughs> Right there, do you say go to hell, cheating whore? No. Todd Mullis confronted Jerry Frazier about his relationship with Amy Mullis, but Frazier denied having an affair. When you talked to Jerry, 
Did he convince you that there was nothing going on? Yes. I mean, for the most part, yes, he was very convincing. But if not him, who? He and his son were the only two people on the property that day. The only part that you have to decide is if Todd Mullis did it. Because certainly, she was murdered. The jury deliberated for seven hours over two days and returned its verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Todd Michael Mullis, guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. A conviction of first degree murder in Iowa carries an automatic life sentence. While there is no discretion for the judge in sentencing, Amy's friends and family look forward to the day when they can tell the court what she meant to them. Whether, we not, whether or not we actually hear from the family of Amy Mullis or Todd Mullis is still up in the air at this point, Vinny, for the sentencing hearing tomorrow. We could even hear from Todd Mullis himself. He would have a chance to give a statement if he so choose to give one tomorrow. But it's important to note that the courtroom will be limited for COVID-19 and social distancing with a limited number of family in the gallery and whatnot. But one thing is for sure tomorrow is that the defense will argue a motion for a new trial in front of the judge before he takes up the sentencing. All right, so there, I mean, there's a lot at stake when you make uh, one of those motions, number one. Uh, also, though, when you are sentenced to life without parole, that is a big, dramatic moment. Uh, and, and again, we'll keep our eye on the courtroom tomorrow. Court TV will be live there. You know, in your piece, Chanley, it, it, it reminded me of that very controversial moment involving the 911 call. Let's take another listen to that. Now, Todd, here I'm going to um, I'm going to play you the part where you're doing the chest compressions and I'm just going to ask that you listen in between the chest compressions, okay? <laughs> Todd, do you whisper cheating whore right there? No. Okay, I'm going to play another clip for you. <laughs> Right there, do you say, go to hell, cheating whore? No. So you don't hear that? No. You're holding your, the phone and, and doing the compressions at the same time? Yes. You knew you were on a recorded line with a 911 operator? Yes. Do you believe that you said, whispered, cheating whore or go to hell, cheating whore, while you were doing CPR? No. And I know today you heard some evidence about those whispers on that 911 call. And I'm going to implore you to listen to that 911 call. You can hear the defendant whisper, cheating whore. And if you go at 7, 7.00, you can hear, go to hell, cheating whore. You know, Chanley, for me, that was like an audio ink block, block test listening to that. Because I listened to it, and if I can hear it. I can absolutely hear it. But then someone else says, well, is he doing like one, two, three, four? And then I say, oh, maybe I hear that. What does the prosecutor have to say about that? Yeah, we did speak with the county prosecutor today to see the response to this defense. This is the first point in the defense's motion for a new trial that this was prosecutorial misconduct, that it was unduly prejudicial for Maureen Hughes to suggest this in cross-examination and then to argue it in closing argument. Of course, the defense in its closing tried to say that it was the Hail Mary of the prosecution reaching for anything to convict this man. But the DA today had some interesting comments. Let's take a listen. One of the main issues was when Ms. Hughes, uh, when Mr. Mullis was testifying, brought up the recording, the 911 recording, where it appears to say something to the effect of cheating whore. Um, I do know that having spoken to some of the jurors afterwards, some of the jurors heard that. Some of the jurors didn't hear that. Some of the jurors heard more than that. Um, and ultimately, they decided because none of us could agree on what was said, we won't consider that evidence at all. The prosecutor saying that the chance to speak with a couple jurors was great, and the fact that they wholly disregarded the what was alleged to have been whispered under Todd Mullis' breath during the 911 call, it didn't factor into their decision in any way. And the prosecutor reaffirming that they based their verdict on the evidence and this 911 call didn't matter. 
All right, another issue that's uh, up tomorrow in this motion uh, being made by the defense involves the internet searches. I remember the internet searches being very powerful evidence inside that courtroom. Very powerful evidence. In fact, the defense is saying that the deputy from the Delaware County Sheriff's Office who testified about the internet searches it was improper expert testimony is what the defense is claiming in its motion for a new trial. And this county deputy basically put those uh, searches from Todd's iPad up for this jury to consider. If you remember these, Vinny, I'm sure you do. It says, what happens to cheaters in history? Killing unfaithful women was killing more accepted centuries ago. Characteristics of cheating women over certain time periods. Well, the defense is not only saying that it was improper expert testimony, but that the deputy did not know the meaning of UTC time. In fact, if you remember during jury deliberations, there are seven hour de of deliberations, they had one question for the court and that involved the definition of UTC time. And of course the judge couldn't answer that question. So the state's response to this, uh, this motion, this part of their motion of the defense is just to say that clearly based on the verdict of the jury, they were more concerned about what these searches said, not when they were made on the iPad. All right, another part of this motion for a new trial involves his defense attorney. Uh, what exactly are they alleging here, that he did not have uh, a, a competent counsel? Right. There are a couple of claims of incompetent counsel or lack of assistance or denied. I think it's denied assistance of counsel. And basically they're saying that Todd did not agree with the defense coming out in an opening statement saying this was a homicide. Remember when Todd Mullis made the initial 911 call and told first responders that this was a farm accident, some freak accident that Amy Mullis ended up with the corn rake in her back. And so when this happened in opening statements, that wasn't something allegedly that Todd was in agreement with and a couple other issues. And again, we talked to the county prosecutor about this and he expounds a little bit more on that. Let's listen. The one claim is his counsel was ineffective for not informing him uh, that he didn't have to testify. Uh, state's position is we don't believe that's correct. Uh, the attorneys for Mr. Mullis are very seasoned attorneys, very well-known attorneys, very highly regarded attorneys uh, who've practiced in the, the criminal realm for, I believe, over 50 years combined. Uh, so I would be amazed if they didn't tell him that he didn't have to testify. Uh, my best guess is that uh, they probably told him he needed to testify uh, in order to uh, try to convince the jury of his innocence, um, as opposed to saying, you must testify. Those were some interesting points, and I have to bring up a little point from the defense's motion when it claims that Todd didn't know that his counsel was going to concede that it was a homicide. In the motion, it says during the trial, immediately upon hearing that his attorney conceded that, he, Todd Mullis wrote, wrote on the notepad at counsel table saying, what the expletive was that with question mark? And just to bring up the point that that wasn't something that he was in agreement with. And in response to the motion that he didn't have a choice to testify. The prosecution also says that, look, he came across really prepared Vinny and seemed to be comfortable up there and they don't believe that the judge should grant any grounds based on that decision. Yeah, he almost seemed too comfortable up on the stand. I mean, I've never seen someone that calm and, and, and cool and collected on his, at his own murder trial. Amazing. Big day tomorrow, folks. Chanley Painter, of course, will be live for us reporting all day long. Uh, Chanley needs a, a good night's rest, so uh, thank you so much, Chanley. Appreciate it.